Orientations was made in 1984, and it comes out of my having worked uh, in helping to found Gay Asians Toronto, which was the first LGBT uh, group for non-white queers in Canada. Uh, Reorientations revisits seven out of the 14 people in Orientations um, 32 years later. I guess the sequel wouldn't have been made without the original, but the thing that was interesting to me in approaching it is that I already had sensed that some things had changed. Between the first film and the second film, I only realized when I started editing how people who were quite open about their promiscuity or their sexual subcultures, when it came to 30 years later, asked me not to include that footage. The center of the community, what, what people uh, are allowed to talk about has shifted. So we, I think as a community, we've become much more conservative, really. Same-sex marriage was not in the, in the, nobody was discussing it 30 years ago. In fact, gay liberation was much um, more tied to sexual liberation and the idea of marriage and monogamy was really frowned upon within the movement in the 70s. How is it that this group, which was seen as the ultimate outsider, the ultimate pariah group, have become now the darling of, of governments. That, that shift is something that's really quite remarkable to have seen. And, there, and it comes with great benefits, of course, but also with some kind of troubling things. I think one of the reasons why LGBT, and I would say particularly gay men, have become kind of darlings of governments, but also of corporations, is that we're seen as being the ultimate consumer. So that ties in with marriage, the, the demand for marriage, and in order to get that demand for marriage, you couldn't have the kind of ideas about, you know, a sexual liberation and, and pornography, etc. Those became kind of bad. I even noticed that um, that younger uh, queer friends of mine talk much less about sex in a direct way that implicates them than people who are even, you know, 10, 20 years older. I think the stakes around queer folks is what marks us as outsiders is sex. Speaking for the L and the G and the B in the LGBTQ, um, it's around sexuality, so it's, it makes sense to me in terms of my own work, which I'm interested in addressing viewers. I'm not interested in talking about queer issues, I'm interested in talking with queer viewers. And in that way, then sexuality plays a part and it plays an integral part in our lives. Very often the work that avoids dealing with sexuality or sex in a candid way is work that is addressing the viewer as straight or non-LGBTQ and trying to make those viewers more accepting. And that, that's, it's, that's fine, but it's not, it's, not my, it's not my agenda.